Alright, what's up New York? How are you? Thanks for coming out here tonight. We appreciate it. So for those of you that don't know, UFC Masvidal versus Diaz is going to be our 500th event. So thank you guys for your support. We really, really appreciate you. Who has the first question? All right, I have a couple of questions. Ariel. Nate Diaz. Ariel. Ariel. Nate, listen to this crowd. How do you feel about being in New York, Nate? It's good. So far, so good. Shit. We're having some mic issues. Hold on a second. Hey, so far, so great. Everything's beautiful out here. Uh, one for Dana. When you started as president of the UFC back in 2001, yeah. smaller arenas, you were struggling to get into New York. You didn't get into New York until 2016. 500th UFC event at the Garden. How does it feel? It feels damn good, let me tell you. And, and, and New York has been very good to us. You know, this is our, uh, I think this is going to be our fourth event. We did 230, Cormier versus Lewis here. Uh, we did a $3 million gate. We did Bisbing versus St. Pierre, $6 million gate. And then we did McGregor versus Alvarez, $18 million gate. And then now this event went on sale today. We've sold over 10,000 tickets. Thank you, New York. We appreciate you. And I have one for Mr. Masvidal. You knocked out Darren Till. You made uh, Leon Edwards eat the three-piece and the soda. You, um, you gave Mr. Askren the MGM Grand Buffet. What are you making Diaz eat? I'm coming to fight with everything I got, you know, so I'm going to give it my all, man, whatever it takes, you know. Um, he's, a different, he's a different caliber than the guys that you mentioned, and I've seen him pull through some tough situations and win those decisions, so I got, uh, I got, I got whatever it takes, man. You know, if it's a buffet, or it's, it's whatever it is, man, I'm, I'm here for it, you know. Thank you, guys. First of all, Dana, thanks for the press passes from the morning blitz. Uh, question for both fighters. You obviously both have a lot of respect for each other. Can you just talk about preparing to this fight and how your mental state differs as opposed to fighting a big trash talker like Askren or McGregor? Yeah, I heard him. Um, I mean, when people talk shit, it is motivating because there's some dudes you're not going to lose to. And Askren is that dude I'm not losing on any universe to. You know, so the the shit talking does help, um, but uh, man, it's just it just helps when when the guy on the other side that you're fighting wants to hurt you, and you know it. That's enough motivation for me right there. And Nate, yeah, there's is this working now? Yeah, it's just like I train for every fight. There's really not a lot of trash going on, and a lot of fights I'm in anyway, so it's just like normal. Uh, I'm just glad to have a worthy opponent and a worthy venue to be in. Thanks, guys. Que hola, Sadie. Hey, guys. Phoenix Carnavalli, Everything Martial Arts. Dana, my question is for you. So this is for the BMF belt, right? Is that really happening? Obviously, the two people here are well-deserving of that title if it is going to happen. If that is the decision that was made, how did you come to the conclusion that, hey, let's do this? Was that question for me? That's for you, yeah. Lena. Hey, Lene, what did she say? Okay. So you, you decide, are you 100% doing this BMF belt? And what does that entail? What is that going to be like? Yeah, the belt? So, you know, when, when Nate did his interview that night, he... He basically said, this is for the baddest motherfucker in the game. So... He was defending the baddest motherfucker in the game. So, you know, this is one of those fights that after that interview, you know, 
started to build a life of its own through the fans and the media. And uh, we, st we didn't seriously start talking about this fight till maybe a couple weeks later in, 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 in a matchmaking meeting. And I said to my guys, listen, tell me if I'm crazy, but what do you think about us actually having a baddest motherfucker in the game belt? And my guys loved it, and we started talking about it. So I went in with the design team at UFC. Right. We started to design it, and uh, I will physically have that belt when I come back to New York. It'll be ready. And, uh, yeah, that's how it happened. Well, I can't, I can't wait to see it. My next question is about matchmaking. Now, basically in the media, it's been said that the situation with, with Covington and Usman is about negotiations, money. Can you tell us what's really going on with that, and is there any new news? Was that for me again? Yeah. Yeah. Who, who are those guys? <laughs> say, say, repeat the question. Well, Master Dallas. Next. <laughs> Next question, please. All right, I'll ask you. Order in the court. So. So, so here, here's the thing with that. Obviously, you heard me say in interviews after that fight that that was the fight I was going to make. Right. Right? So, Colby Covington can say whatever he wants. We make nope. fights for a living. That's what we do. We, we go after guys. We say, this is next. This is the date. Do you want the fight? Right? And obviously, nope. Nope. you know, he, he wanted more nope. money to yeah. fight Usman. We went back and forth. This is the second time he's done it. He had a fight in Dallas, too. So, we said, if you don't want to fight Usman, then we'll give you Tyrone Woodley. He turned down Tyrone Woodley, too. You either want to fight or you don't. But we can, you know, when Kobe Covington's ready to fight, he'll let us know. This pussy, matchup pussy, is obviously pussy, fan favorites. Pussy, 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 pussy. This matchup is obviously fan favorites. This is a, a, a win or lose situation is a win-win situation for the fans. But can you talk about, Dana, how important this is for their division? I'm down. Yeah, no, this belt, I, this, this belt, this fight's a big deal for the division, for who's next uh, in the title picture, and obviously a huge fan favorite fight. So th this is one of those fights. Diaz went out and beat Pettis, comes out, gives his interview, calls out Jorge. This thing took a life of its own. It's a big fight. And it's not only, you know, a, a fight that people want to see, it's an important fight in the division and in, in the title picture. So it'll be them and then you. Uh, Dana, this is uh, Dan Canobio, CompuBox TV. This question's for uh, all three of you guys. November 2nd is a really big night in the combat sports world. Obviously, this fight right here has huge crossover appeal. But also, Canelo Alvarez fighting on DAZN. Question for all three of you guys is... If there's someone on the fence about ordering the Canelo fight or this one, why should they order uh, this fight right We're here? We're fighting for so the, the best, best motherfucker life. in the game, Bell. That's why. So, uh, you know, the night that we started, we started talking about this date and that, uh, you, you know, we were going to take this date. Then a week later, I heard they were going to do that fight. I think they're crazy to go the same night as us on the zone, but, you know, it is what it is. But if they time it right and they do this thing the right way, it could be very much like the other night when Gaethje fought Cowboy and then the Fury fight was on after. So if they time it right, it, it could work out. But if they want to go head to head, they're fucking nuts. Uh, and secondly, for all you guys, so mostly for, for Nate, fighting in, in New York, fighting in MSG, the mecca of boxing, the, the mecca of combat sports, the mecca of entertainment. Now you get to put your name on that list. What does it mean for you to, to join that, that list of fighting at Madison Square Garden? Yeah, that's the best, one of the best parts of this whole thing is being the headline in that. It, uh, it, like you said, it's a historical event center. I, I'm sure all the greats fought there, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, and everybody, I'm sure, all the, all the big games. So uh, that's definitely a great part of this fight. What's going on guys? Welcome to New York. Stan the Man here from Menace and the Man. My qu first question is for Nate. Nate, what are the chances that we can get Nick in your corner for this fight? Uh, if anybody talks to him, tell him to come through. He's my corner man. Dana, let's make that happen. And another one for Nate. I smelled some weed earlier. 
Was that you backstage smoking? Man, I smelt it as soon as I came I'm out here. It's you guys. Jorge Masvidal, nobody said anything about how sharply dressed you are. You look amazing. My question for you is, if you are able to defeat Nate in November, what do you want next? A 170-pound title shot or Conor McGregor? Well, you can't ask me. The man right here said I'm too much man for that dude, so don't bring that dude up no more in my interviews. He already said it himself, so that fight is not available. What I'm going to wait is for those two sissies to clear it out of, of who's going to fight, and then if, I'm, uh, if God gives me the victory November 2nd, I, I want to take everybody's head that's attached to a belt. If somebody says they have a belt, well, I'm coming for it. And if it's any one of those two sissies, then they're going to get it, you know? Yeah. And I mean sissies in the purest of forms. Yes, yes. So, Dana, can we make that happen? Can the winner of this fight welcome Conor McGregor back to the octagon? Let this fight happen. I don't know. Let's see how this, how Let this, this fight happen. Out. You know what I mean. Let's keep this baddest motherfucker alive belt going. <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right. Thank you. Hey Nate, how are you? It's been it, 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 it's been a while since. You, can you hear me, Nate? You made a very quick turnaround here. We saw you in August. You returned in November. When you left Anaheim after the Pettis fight, did you think you would return this soon? I just knew that. Uh, if uh, these guys all came correct, so that's, that's what went down, and that's what I was looking for. We've heard Jorge's side of the story on how this fight came together. Colby's talked about it. Kamaro, from your perspective, how did it all come together? After I asked, when I uh, asked to defend it against Masvidal, I'm pretty sure it was a wrap right there. That's when it, that's when it started. I only asked that because it seemed like there was an offer for Masvidal to fight Usman as well, but it seemed like he was more interested in this fight. You can fight for phony belts, or you can fight for the best, best motherfucker in the game belt. And how do you feel about the UFC actually making this title? Did you think that that would happen, or did you think you'd have to produce it yourself? You made it happen. No, I think it's, uh, yeah, my man, I made it happen, that's why. So you're okay with that? That's what it is. All right. Jorge, I like the get up. Tell us the inspiration behind Thank the you, suit. I let the people answer it. Get him, because he doesn't know. Okay. And, and also, I just want to ask, you know, you've been, uh, you've been called street Jesus, you've been called Cuban Jesus, but I don't see you actually sort of calling yourself that. How do you feel about people comparing you to... I'm in no shape or, or form, Jesus or God. I'm nothing like that. I got one talent, I can baptize people, but I'm not God or nothing like that, man. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Hey, Nate, so you call yourself a badass motherfucker. How do you say that when you're a vegan? I'm harder than anybody here. What's up? I guess we'll find out then. <laughs> Step your game up, dog. A question for Jorge. Uh, when uh, this year started, you know, you've had a great run in 2019. Your star is on the rise. You're sitting here, beautiful backdrop. Just talk, you know, fantastic suit. Just talk a little bit about your rise through this year and how comfortable you feel in the spotlight. Yeah, he does have a point over there, so we're gonna hand the microphone to the audience soon if the, the media keeps asking the same questions. But I love it, man, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, me sitting up here means more zeros in my bank account, more money from my family, so I'm ready for it, man. I've been doing this for a long time. I love to compete. I love to compete at the highest level possible. I love knowing that the opponent in front of me is, is somebody known for kicking ass, man, because that's what's motivating. And I'm more motivated than error, bro, do you know?
Karen Bots here with uh, Ask the Experts. Question for uh, Nate and Jorge. What's your uh, official prediction? How's it going to go down on November 2nd? I envision myself with my hand getting raised at all costs. Whatever hell I got to run through, whatever desert I got to go through, mountains I got to climb, that's how I envision it, man. I got the only person that believes in me since I started fighting is me, and that's the only person that still believes in me to the end, man, is me. So I'm, I'm going with me all the way, my brother. That's a dumb question. <laughs> and Nate, any prediction from you? Yeah, I'm coming to win. Thank you. I'll take, I'll take a couple more questions. Go ahead, bud. All right, so Nate, I know you've come out with your own cannabis strain. I got people asking me, when's it gonna be available internationally? People in Australia, Melbourne, they're asking for it. Yeah, we're gonna go up. Oh, the, the uh, nutrition company I came up with is uh, um, Game, game up nutrition is not is not cannabis. Uh, it's for a CBD. So that shit's illegal everywhere. I think I don't know, but it's coming soon. Hey, and the t Terminator is a vegan motherfucker. <laughs> so obviously, very respectful for both of you guys. You both respect the gangster, the realness. After the fight, are you guys sharing a joint or a drink? A joint, preferably. Amen. Are you good with that too, Nate? Both, if I win. <laughs> All right. We'll take one more question. Who's got the last question? This one's for Dana. Since we're in New York, I had to ask you, have you bought your Pat's Super Bowl tickets yet? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I do like your shirt, and yes, we are going to win another Super Bowl. Let's go! <laughs> All right, listen, I'm going to square these guys off. Thank you so much, New York. We appreciate you.